Well, hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, I'm excited today to take a look at Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo, the deluxe edition uh, from Mark Silvestri's run that he just did. Uh, super cool book. This one, I saw that Collector's Paradise was doing a signature version. Uh, so I hopped on that real fast. Um, really reasonably priced too, but um, yeah. So I got that. Couldn't pass that up. But um, what I want to do, uh, as you'll see here, look at this amazing, beautiful black and white line work from Mark Silvestri. Um, shed a little more light on that. It is super cool. So what I was thinking, I don't want to, we can't take a look through the whole book, obviously, but I want to go back. So here is the afterward that Mark Silvestri put in here for us. And he just kind of walks us through, like, from start to finish, like, the process and how it came to be and all that good stuff. So I wanted to read that, kind of do a voiceover while we check out this amazing black and white artwork that's in the back. Um, this stuff is so cool. I don't know if it's just because it's been a while since I've seen Mark Silvestri doing like a monthly type book doing pages, uh, but there's something special about it. Uh, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. It's just a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, all the illustrations are just fantastic. There's a few things I, a few panels I really love. Uh, amazing cover. But I love his take on the Batmobile. Um, that was really sweet. That kind of just popped out at me. Anytime you have an artist doing like a new Batmobile, it's it's super fun to see them do their own take on the, the good old Batmobile. Uh, so I love this page. There's so many great pages uh, from this series. But uh, but anyway, so I love Mark Silvestri's black and white work. Uh, they have all the covers back here for all the, the variant covers that were done. Um, but I, I just, there's something special about his black and white line work that he did here. I've always liked his, his work, obviously, um, but I, I think it just retains more of the that rough kind of life of the art. Because when you have, when you're doing a rough, you know, you're roughing out your work, you're doing sketches, uh, when you're penciling your own work, you know, you can kind of keep a bit of that um, that life in there. You keep the life of the sketch, you know, but I feel like when it goes, when it changes hands and it goes to the inker, it might get a little more rigid, a little more... Uh, I don't think Silvestri's work was ever stiff, but I just think here it's retaining more of that life and this cool kind of Bernie Wrightson style he's doing is just got so much energy. Uh, it's very fluid and there's just something about it. It's, it's, it's unique. So I love it. Um, I'm sure you guys will too. So I'm going to read the afterward and we're just going to look and just peruse through these amazing black and white pages. Sound like a plan? All right, y'all. Here we go. Batman and the Joker, The Deadly Duo, afterward by Mark Silvestri. I've known Jim Lee for more than 30 years. During that time, we've worked together, hung out together, and as one would probably guess, talked comics together. In more recent years, these conversations would include Jim tossing out the possibility of me doing something with some caped guy named Batman. Now, being a business owner, plus making comics, pretty much guarantees that there's rarely room on my plate for any other serving of anything. But I wasn't getting any younger, and there was this one Batman story I always wanted to tell. So, let's make a deal. A call was made, and I met with DC's then editor-in-chief, Bob Harris, for dinner while we were both at San Diego Comic-Con. The year was 2014. Bob and I go way back, and since he was paying, I didn't want to waste his time, so I figured I'd jump right in and give him my one-sentence pitch. Batman and the Joker have to team up to fight a new common enemy. To my shock, he thought it was a really cool idea, and that I should do it. Now to be clear, the shock wasn't so much that he thought the idea was cool, it was just surprising to me that it hadn't already been done to death. I mean, a story about two of the most iconic adversaries in pop culture history being forced to work together sounded like an entertaining no-brainer to me. So being respectful, respectful of what I knew of the Batverse at the time, I went ahead and gave Bob the bones of the plot and how I thought it would play out. He considered it for a beat and then said something that sealed the deal for me. Don't worry about continuity. Tell the story you want to tell. Time to write a comic. Spoilers incoming. The most important thing with any story, regardless of genre, is of course your characters. Because of this, I kept the cast small, with the action focused on Batman and the Joker, and the morbid pairing they find themselves in. 
Harley Quinn, Jim, and Barbara Gordon, Alfred Pennyworth, Detective Bullock, Amanda Sims, and her red herring father, Donald Sims, all have key supporting roles that help pile on the mystery as the story builds to its climax. On the surface, Deadly Duo is an action-adventure comic, but at its core, it's about what's important to us and how far we would go to protect it. With this in mind, I wanted to have scenes where the interactions of specific characters hit important emotional beats and plot points as often as possible. An example of this is one of my favorite scenes, the confrontation between Barbara Gordon and Bruce Wayne. It's a small but crucial moment that starts with the two of them as Batman and Batgirl in the Batcave and ends in the library with them as Bruce and Barbara. Throughout, Barbara is open and raw, while Bruce is cold and measured. It's the point in the story where Bruce Wayne, Batman, admits to Barbara, the reader, and himself that he needs the Joker's help. This goes against everything he stands for, and the fire reflected in his eyes drives the point home. Batman has already failed several times, and from this point on, his journey truly takes him into the heart of darkness. I grew up watching sci-fi, fantasy, and classic monster movies, so it was important to me that I included these elements in what I've described as a buddy cop horror story. I also love a good mystery. So along with being a caped, crusading ass kicker, Batman absolutely needed to be the world's greatest detective. And that meant Batman had to always be ahead of the reader, from the get-go. I knew where I wanted the story to begin, where I wanted it to end, and the message I wanted to convey. All I had to do was fill in the middle with as many fun twists and turns as I could, while still staying true to the characters and making sure the situations they were put in and the decisions they made drove the plot forward. Batman in particular needed to always be proactive and constantly making decisions that affected what came next, good and bad. Plus, if Batman and the Joker were going to team up, something Batman would never do, the reason better warrant it. A high concept like the two comics greatest enemies working together needed a unique sandbox to play in, and that's where my love of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror really came in handy. Batman and the Joker, the unlikely duo. It is often said that Batman and the Joker are two sides of the same coin, one side chaos, the other side order. Either one taken to the extreme is unhealthy for us humans, and it's this dynamic in their relationship that sits at the heart of Deadly Duo. Batman is all about order preparation, and myopic purpose. The Joker lives his life walking into flower shops and smashing the first vase he sees. The Joker has no ability or desire to change. Batman Bruce Wayne, however, can, quote-unquote, barely, and is the one character in the story with an arc that changes him ever so slightly. I wanted Batman's story to start with him being typically self-absorbed and end with him being just a teeny bit less self-absorbed. The big appeal for me with the whole team-up concept was that Batman would be miserable while the Joker would be having the time of his life. I took this inherently funny notion and mixed it in a ton of danger and healthy serving of desperation. I had to make sure this unholy alliance placed obstacle after obstacle in front of Batman, to the point that the reader would fear he'd actually lose. To do that, I needed an adversary that could beat Batman his own game, being the smartest person in the room. Enter Amanda Sims. Gotharella. I wanted Deadly Duo in part to be an origin story for a new villain. The trick was how to do that without the reader realizing it. The obvious answer was to misdirect the reader into thinking the villain was Donald Sims and hold back the reveal that it was actually his daughter for as long as possible. It was really important that the flashbacks, as well as the clues Batman was uncovering, were actually the origins of how Amanda Sims came to be and why she was so pissed at everybody. This mattered because we knew a lot about her before she even appeared. Those clues also seeded the eventual bombshell that Amanda knew Bruce Wayne was Batman, and that all those tasks were designed to break him. One of the main themes running through the story is the secrets people keep and the masks they use to preserve them. Amanda is a tortured soul cursed with knowing the truth hidden within everyone she encounters. This drives her to want to cleanse Gotham of what she feels is its cancer, its very citizens. Yes, she acknowledges that good people exist, but a whole bunch more deserve to lose their heads. More important, though, is that she's the mirror that forces Batman, Bruce Wayne, to look deeper within himself and face his own lies. Time to draw a comic. This was a story I always intended to illustrate myself, but I've been drawing comics a long time, and I felt the itch to try something new. Over the past decade, my work has been more and more influenced by the pen and ink work of artists like Franklin Booth, and Bernie Wrightson, the latter from his classic Frankenstein Error. The way they used lines to establish gray tones, depth, and focus was like painting in black and white, and it really spoke to me. 
I thought combining my superhero sensibilities with some old school illustration techniques would make for a really interesting look. I also wanted to ink my own pencils, because when I do, the work has a grittier feel to it that I thought would be perfect, be a perfect fit for the brutalist slash diesel punk Wizard of Oz Gotham I saw in my head. But the thing I was really looking forward to was putting my own spin on DC's most iconic characters. Batman and the Joker were obviously first on the list. Batman, to me, has always been a physical force of nature, so I purposely strayed away from any armored look and gave him exaggerated, muscular bulk, kind of like a sinewy but beefed up jungle cat. And whereas Batman is physically imposing, the Joker needed to almost look like a strong breeze could snap him in two. I wanted to stress that the Joker's power comes not from his physicality, but from his insanity. And that, to me, makes him even more terrifying. Loving gothic slash art deco architecture, as well as being a car guy, had me licking my artistic chops at the thought of creating my own Gotham, as well as Batman's main ride. The Batmobile was one of the first concept drawings I did, and I had a blast playing with design cues ranging from Italian exotic cars to fighter jets. I always considered Gotham to be a character in its own right, and wanted it to give the feeling that it was a living, breathing thing. The Batcave was also treated as a character, because in Deadly Duo, I used it to reflect Batman's descent into darkness. If you take a closer look, you'll notice that the expansive Batcave seen in issue number one gets smaller, darker, and more claustrophobic as we move along and Batman's world closes in on him. A team effort. The right colors are a critical component when setting mood as well as adding depth and focus to the art. The color palette for this series also had to be just right. Gotham and its inhabitants seemed to live in an eternal night, but I wanted the pages to pop, so mixing warm and cool colors was essential. Another consideration was that the colorist would have to deal with my often delicate line work and not overpower it. Not an enviable job. Arif Pranto was the perfect fit, and his immense talent shows through on every page. Good lettering is a big deal, and this book needed a true pro in that department. Troy Piteri was my first and only choice. His fonts, along with his creative designs for the caption boxes and word balloons, really captured the characters' voices and made each of them unique. And the little character avatars at the corners of the captions are priceless. Good editors are worth their weight in gold, and I was lucky enough to have some of the best. On the Tapcal side, I had Matt Hawkins, who was great at trimming the fat and pointing out when the dialogue was redundant, if the artwork already told the story. That's really helpful when an artist is writing for himself. Mark Doyle was the first DC editor on the series and got the ball rolling in the right direction. It was Mark's suggestion to have Batman and the Joker shake hands at the end of issue number one. I love the gag, so I went about figuring out how to make it work. I think that moment really surprised a few people. Rob Levin stepped in next. I've worked with Rob in the past, and it's always been a pleasure. He's a writer himself, and that makes for a great collaborative editor. As a plus, it was his suggestion to name the series Deadly Duo. Gotta love that. Ben Mieres came in around issue number four and brought the whole thing home. He was there for the final scripting, colors, and lettering once the seven issues were fully drawn, and really pulled it all together. Ben has an uncanny ability to spot what's missing and always had terrific insight when the plot point or line of dialogue needed to be punched up for maximum effect. I always look forward to his notes, and the series was made that much better as a result of his input, and his idea of adding chapter titles gave the dark tale a real cinematic feel. Of course, none of this would have been possible without the love, support, and patience of my wife, Bridget. Not only did she put up with all the BS extra hours I was putting in, she was my art assistant as well. She drove in fearlessly with her toolbox of electric erasers and literally spent hours on each page getting rid of my squiggly, smudgy pencil lines. So there you have it. All that's left is to thank all of you for picking up Batman and the Joker, the deadly duo. I hope you had as much fun reading it as I had writing and drawing it. Because at the end of the day, you're the ones that we creators of comic books really want to make happy. Thanks again, and remember, comics forever. Mark Silvestri. Bye. <laughs>